All right, let's do this. Hello, and um, yes, welcome to uh, the Creative Earth. Um, I've uh, I've I've done a little bit of designing um, while we were out, and uh, let me just shove myself down over here and pull up the game, and we'll get right to it. Um, okay, I'm just currently in my coal stores. Um, all right, so. Uh, you know when you're doing the harvest node thingy or harvesting nodes I'll just go down here to my uh, excuse the uh, the blueprint I'm still building the white hutch here um, yes you know the way that you, you you do this harvesting trick you put on your harvesters and then you phase them out harvest and then phase back in I'm not gonna go into all of that because uh, because you know all of that. You're pros, aren't you? But uh, what I am going to go into... Ah, dang lighting glitch. What I am going to go into is I'm going to take you into uh, my time vault here. Because it's kind of irritating, isn't it? It's like, you know, you're watching your watch and you think, I really want I really want to get... Let's, uh, let's just... Um, go back to here a second so we can talk um, yeah I really wanna uh, I really wanna get them you know the maximum out of my uh, harvesting you know I really wanna put a spurge on that means I want to get uh, I forget if it's 15 or 20 minutes between phases phasings but really want to maximize it so I want to get three harvests in the next hour so you sit there and you've got one eye on your watch or your windows clock and you uh, and if you get it wrong then bam that's it node gone well I came up with a little pixie timer let me show it to you let's go back over here and come out of there um, here it is now in essence how it works is we flip the switch and it kicks everything off so uh, at the moment we've got a little sign there that's saying harvest unsafe now if we go in there you'll see there isn't actually anything on that sign that is because if I put my little tool on it's coming from down here and what we have is we have a little offset message coming from an arc sign and uh, essentially you've got a line that says in red harvest safe sorry in green harvest safe and in red harvest unsafe and uh, the visibility of those is controlled by these two size parameters here we've got the size of the uh, the green one relating to a parameter one which is the job done so when job done is received by this unit it will size that to true or one and make that um, visible size two is taken from that and that comes from an inverted signal so that when this is one that is naught when this is naught this sorry when this is one this is naught so uh, it has the effect of um, flipping the messages okay you can see here whoops minutes since harvest now if we look over here we'll see we've got a pigsy in the enclosure there we go I've used a ghost pigsy that was my son's idea um, right so how does this work well, let's put the uh, let's put this on again. Now, when we flip the switch, we go over here, and we have a little and condition here. So, when the switch is on and the inverter is flipped, we'll get to that in a second. Drive the clock. Now, you'll notice you'll notice if I just go back into that that instead of using uh, this is your standard output um, 
it'll have a little output string that's randomly generated based on uh, time code and some other parameters but uh, I'm actually using my own variables here which you can do very legitimately and the reason I'm doing that I will explain shortly sorry if I'm jumping around a bit this is all new to me and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still skipping around okay it's just it's just done a thing so we should now have two pinksies yep there they are there's two of them now <coughs> what happens when this is saying all right I've got a true and a true so what it does is it sends to this clock here um, and uh, if you look here on the tool you'll see that its input is come uh, is drive clock and it outputs the first pulse uh, you can see it's got a delay of 10 and it's currently in a false state is it gonna flip over? no because it's got to go through all of these others so uh, input is from a drive clock which it gets from this you can see it's uh, it's highlighting green there because I'm on the right little node. So this sends a pulse to this. This says, "Okay, fine. I'll count ten, and then I will send first pulse, which, if we follow the line, goes up to uh, this little counter clock up here. That counter clock there for, receives first phase." and then it sends second phase you can't really see that because of the uh, um, the background is too light so yes it receives first pulse sends second pulse and throws a 10 second delay on okay and you can see from uh, just looking at it the way that it's crossing up uh, takes from one sends to the next and so on and when it gets to the third one at the end it sends it down to this of uh, this one here which then sends it down to here and it sends a clock pulse which actually if we count them up we've got five there and one there all on 10 seconds gives us an accumulative total of a minute and so yes it's been three minutes or three going on four minutes since um, we started generating pigsies so uh, yeah so once it's counted up its minutes it sends a signal over here to this spawner which drops a pigsy in the pen okay so as the pigsies are counting up we have a little sensor down here that is counting the pigsies now it should be doing uh, that was a little test to see if it would actually generate a message text you know number little pigsy but uh, it doesn't seem to be working um, so when that that uh, sends uh, re sorry it receives job done from that uh, does it why is that receiving job done oh it's not it's receiving piggy count so this as we said harvests a piggy uh, sorry spawns a piggy the other thing it does if we follow this down is it comes down to uh, this gate here uh, no no, where's that going? Oh yes, yeah, sorry, yes, clock pulse comes down to here, gets received here, and this inverts it and sends it all the way back to here, which gives this a true, and as long as the switch is on, it starts the pulse again. So once it's gone all around here once a minute effectively it's launching a pig and starting the counter again so uh, yeah minute since harvest or since we flipped the switch 
four. Okay. <clears throat> now, how does this sign here work? Well, we've got uh, this which I showed you. So when this receives a job done, where are they? Uh, oh, you can just about see them. So this here sends a uh, job done, which it receives from uh, nope. So this receives the piggy count. And if we have a little look at the compar uh, the comparison gate, it's receiving piggy count. So at the moment this is running on four or five or whatever its current count is. And as soon as it reaches 20, it will send the signal a job done. Now, when a job done is sent over to here, this inverter gate, it flips it. So we've got uh, a one from job done coming here, which goes over to there. It's flipped into a zero. And this sends sign flipped down to this arc sign. This sends job done down to this arc sign. And that flips these sizes over. Uh, one becomes zero, the other becomes one. And that effectively is what uh, changes the sign. Now, uh, we've got five done. Now, let's just go back into here and change this number to uh, six. Uh, so 20 piggies is 20 minutes. So, yeah, that would be a normal harvest cycle. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to change it to six piggies so that you can see what happens when piggy number six pops in. Let's get rid of those so that you can actually see it. It's quite mesmerizing all of that clockwork sounds, all those clockwork sounds going on in the background. Now what I'm thinking of doing is uh, updating this principle slightly so that I can actually have a display um, I don't know, on a wall or above the base or something, which actually gives a minute and second countdown. And what I'll do, how I'll do that, instead of just counting minute piggies, I'll also put in some 10 second piggies and some single second piggies so that I can uh, have minute and second digits. The reason I want to split them up is um, purely and simply because going to be less entities with um, a unit count, a tens count, and a minutes count. Ah, oh, there we go. Harvest safe. Six popped in and it went to harvest safe. So obviously if it was in its proper harvest cycle, that would actually be 20. And um, so, yes. Um, all you would need to do is set up one of these arc signs anywhere in the world with this uh, using these inputs and that output and at every single node you can have this counters um, results sent to it so when you're wandering around you can see at a glance as you're passing all of your nodes whether or not they're safe to harvest I hope that made sense. Um, I say it only just makes sense to me. I designed this last night when I was half asleep, so uh, I'm surprised it was working at all. Um, but uh, yeah, there it is. Um, in essence, you have uh, a logic gate that's um, driving. Uh, that's allowing the clock to run. You've got a clock that sends off 
and triggers these each one output triggering the input of the next comes down here and then it uh, sends a pulse to um, fire the piggy and to uh, flip that to um, basically re-trigger this um, so yes what happens when we're all done to reset it all we do literally uh, and you can see here um, this is set to another little inverter so that when the switch is on there is a floor this here is feeding the three phases that we're about to utilize to get rid of our piggies and they go down there to um, be disposed of at their leisure and you can see they're down there still but the uh, counter has reset to zero as has the sign um, so there we go that's it uh, the piggy timer uh, in a nutshell um, let's uh, go back over to that and uh, yeah um, so that's it um, do feel free to play with the design and see what other uh, concoctions you can come up with but uh, yes there we go um, a fully functioning harvest period timer um, at some point I hope they uh, they put in a little um, variable parameter hook that will allow you to uh, attach to system time because then you'll be able uh, using a system similar to this to be able to actually have a fully functioning clock somewhere Anyway, that was, uh, that was all I really wanted to um, impart to you and share with you. So uh, on that note, um, if this were the Shaderverse, uh, the Shadercraft, I would say Q outro, but we don't have one. So I'm going to shove you back to uh, the stream idle and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye. And what's that doing on? Go away.